So it's going to be Betty White. There's enough room in one week for two um, tarot draws on Betty White. So I hope you like the video. If you do like it, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching, just like Betty White would have thanked you for watching her. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So it's not often that uh, someone of that age you might consider iconic, but this woman was. I mean, right out of high school, she started working in showbiz, and she did it right until the day that she left us. So, Betty White, this one's for you, babe. So to pick up where we left off, and I'll just tell you about her being born, and then we'll go to the 1970s for Betty White. So in 1922, she was born Betty Marion White in Oak Park, Illinois. On January 17th, she was a Capricorn, and her, that was her legal name. It was not a shortened version of Elizabeth. Her name is just Betty. She was the only child of a homemaker and a lighting company executive. Her paternal grandfather was Danish. Her maternal grandfather was Greek. She had other roots being English and Welsh, and both of her grandmothers were Canadians. And in 23, 1923, her family moved to Al 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 Alhambra, California, uh, when she was a little over a year old, and then later to L L.A. during the Great Depression. And to make extra money, her father built crystal radios, look it up, and sold them whenever he could. And uh, since it was the height of the Depression, he would even trade those for goods or even dogs on some occasions. And uh, Betty attended the Beverly Hills Unified uh, High School District. So, um, if you want to know the rest about how she grew up, look at the uh, previous video. And um, but here I'm going to jump ahead. I've got to scroll down with, with down on the, uh, down here, uh, and uh, let you know that during 19, the 70s, what happened until her death. And then uh, she had just married in the 1960s, 1963, as a matter of fact, a game show uh, passwords host and the love of her life, uh, Alan Ludden. But uh, in the, so now, 10 years ahead, 1973 to 77, Betty was Sue Ann Nivens on the Mary Tyler Moore Show. And she had worked in, uh, on TV in game shows and appearances here and there on uh, TV shows all during that 10 years. But now, 73 till 77, she's uh, Sue Ann Nivens. Uh, eight years later then, 1985 to 92, she was Rose Nyland on The Golden Girls. And then another 18 years later, 2010 to 2015, she was a star of Hot in Cleveland. And by 2018, she had worked longer in TV than anyone else, man or woman, and that earned her a place in the Guinness World Records. So that's 2018. Now, uh, let's see. But... Uh, back in the day, going back into the early 70s, NBC had offered her an anchor job on a flagship breakfast TV show that they were going to call Today. And uh, she turned it down because she didn't want to move to New York. And the job went to Barbara Walters, of course. And then uh, in 73, 1973, she was the man-hungry Sue Ann Nivens on the Mary Tyler Moore Show. And, and um uh, that's where she got her second and third uh, Emmy Award. She described the character as icky sweet, and Mary Tyler Moore had said they needed someone who could play sickeningly sweet like Betty White. <laughs> and uh, Betty even satirized her own on-screen persona uh, in the same way. And uh, she won two Emmys back-to-back. -back. And then 1975, she soon started a 10-year run as hostess of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. How about that? Uh, 1977, after the Mary Tyler Moore show, she had her fourth TV uh, her fourth sitcom, The Betty White Show, but it canceled after just one season. And then in 81, Alan Ludden, love of her life, died from stomach cancer, and she she had been stepmother to three of his children from his first wife, first wife who died of cancer in 1961. Uh, Betty White uh, decided never to remarry, and she had said in an interview that she never uh, regretted not having ch kids, but I mean, she raised those uh, kids of his, so she didn't not ever have kids, she just didn't bear kids. Uh, in 1983, she became the first woman to win a Daytime Emmy Award in Outstanding Game Show Host and was deemed the First Lady of Game Shows. In 83 to 84, she had a recurring role as Ellen Harper Jackson on Mama's Family. You know, that was that Carol Burnett little uh, TV sitcom with Eunice was so, uh, the Southern daughter who was so uh, tacky and, and bewildered, and then uh, Ellen Harper Jackson was her snooty sister who was a little better off. 
So um, she scored the biggest hit of her life as uh, Rose uh, Nyland, though, on the Golden Girls. And um, that was through from 1985 through 1992. And she was originally going to be cast as the sexy Blanche, but uh, Rue McClanahan was going to be the ditzy Rose. And the director said yesterday switch roles. And uh, afterwards, uh, after the Golden Girls was over, she won in 1996. She won an Emmy for an outstanding guest uh, actress appearance in a con comedy series for another uh, TV program she appeared on. In 95, she was formally inducted into the Academy T of Television Arts and Sciences Hall of Fame, and that was in 95. In 2005 to 2008, she had a reoccurring role in Boston Legal as a calculating blackmailing uh, gossip monger, and then she was great. In 2006, she joined Soap's, uh, soap opera The Bold and the Beautiful for 22 appearances, so she's just all over TV. And then in 2009, she starred in the romantic comedy film a Proposal alongside uh, Sandra Bullock and Ryan Reynolds, and in 2010, the Mars Candy Company launched that golden ad campaign, that global ad campaign that was golden. Uh, you're not you when you're hungry. If you remember, she was on the football field and someone uh, said something to her that was derogatory about her football playing and she looks up and says, well, you're, that's not what your girlfriend said last night. And then she gets hit by another football player and then it shows that she's really this big, burly uh, footballer instead of uh, the beautiful Betty White. Because you're not what? You're not you uh, when you're hungry. And he eats a bar and he's great. So, in case you didn't need all that, now in, in 2009, the Screen Actors Guild, uh, SAG, honored her with the Screen Actors Guild Life Achievement Award, but at the same time, not the same time, but in, in that time period, the USDA Forest Service with Smokey Bear made her an honorary forest ranger. And remember, Betty had said in previous interviews that she wanted to be a forest ranger as a little girl, but women weren't allowed to do so then. And at that time, more than one-third of the Forest Service employees were women at the time she got the award. And uh, 2010, a grassroots campaign on Facebook called for Betty White to host NSL. And at age 88, she was the oldest person to person person to host the show and joked that she didn't know what Facebook was even about. And now that she did know what it is, it sounded like a huge waste of time. And also this year, she started the TV show Hot in Cleveland. She was only supposed to be in that pilot, but was asked to stay in the series. And in 2011, she received the Screen Actors Guild Award for Outstanding Performance by a Female Actor for Hot in Cleveland. And in 2012, she won it again. And 2012 to 2014, uh, Betty hosted and executive produced uh, this other TV show that typically, typically was shown in the evenings called Betty White's Off Their Rockers, where seniors play practical jokes on uh, the younger generation. Really hysterical. You have to look it up. But in 2021, not up to date, uh, before her death, though, it was announced that her 100th birthday would be celebrated on January 17th in, 1920, in 2022 at theaters across the United States. And then... She died on December 31st, 2021. She had uh, an entertainment career that spanned eight decades and was among the first women to exert control in front of and behind the camera. And now we're going to pull some cards on that woman, Betty White. So, The Light Sears Tarot by Chris Ann wonderful cards. They're very beachy. They're very now. Uh, the container they come in is really nice. It has some nice thoughts inside. And um, the cards themselves and the guidebook, all of this is good. The, um, the guidebook, although it's not in color, it's readable and uh, it gives some good ideas as to how you might uh, interpret some of these cards. Of course, you know, the interpretation is very personal. So you have to decide if those inter interpretations entirely work for you. But they're based on the Rider Waite system. And you can see that the art goes right to the edge of the cards. They're very colorful. They're very, uh, they just speak to you right away. I mean, you just, even if you didn't know what uh, uh, the symbols of the cards mean, I think anybody could look at some of these cards and think, oh, okay, this is what it means to me. Like I always say, I love to uh, have someone if we're going to do a reading, kind of spread the cards out like this, and then they kind of get into the game. They start looking at the art, and their mind sort of kind of gets into the uh, into the mode of of let's get some truth out here. Let's get some some tarot reading done. So, Light Sears Tarot, really really nice cards. So let's give Betty at least a couple of seconds of meditation.
what an American treasure. I mean, generations knew her, different generations, I mean to say. And um, so, I don't know. I'm just going to do a, uh, a full Celtic cross on the life of this amazing woman. Um, it just so happens uh, I lost someone uh, close to me in my family just a couple days before Betty White passed. So, let's see what the cards can tell us about Betty. Six cards to begin with. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Betty White. Signifier card for this draw is the Four of Cups. You know, cups are compassion, emotion, uh, deep, heartfelt feelings. And the Four of Cups is being offered something that we don't quite want, that we're not sure if we should take. Okay, so that's the signifier for Betty. Um, the uh, challenge to that, with this King of Swords, Swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. And the King is in, is in control of that. So, you know, it occurs to me that um, I wonder how Betty felt about this long, long journey of fame. Uh, I wonder if she felt that she deserved it. And uh, the challenge uh, to that feeling then with this King of Swords is knowing that there's truth, there's justice, there are rules that the universe uh, works by, and there's a law of attraction. And so she was absolutely the king of all of that. The base of this reading then with this Queen of Pentacles, you know, Pentacles is value, is worth, it's of the earth. And what better description do we have for Betty White? The um, past of this reading, Queen of Wands. Okay, absolutely in charge of your actions, making things happen, being the spark of, 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 of what is your existence. So yeah, that's how she came into it. And in the sky of this reading, with the Two of Swords, making choices. Sometimes they're not always easy choices to make, but you do that. You pick a, a, a way to go, and, uh, and then you do the best you can with what you've decided on. The uh, likely outcome for the first part of this reading for Betty White is the Four of Swords. And the Four of Swords is um, understanding that there are times when you have to take a break. You have to take a rest. Uh, and uh, it's the most important thing you can do in that moment. Okay? The signifier card or the self of this question about the life of Betty White is right here in this Eight of Wands. Lots of issues. Lots of sparks. I mean, she had a career that just was for generation after generation after generation. So yeah, she was the action uh, in that in, in that scenario. And then it's in the environment of what? The Ace of Cups. A great big offer of emotion, of compassion, just being held up and offered to us to enjoy. The um, hopes and the fears of this reading, temperance, finding that balance. I pray to God that she found that balance in her life to, to enjoy all the uh, earthly uh, uh, things that she earned and, and all the emotional um, gifts that she possessed. The likely outcome, Six of Wands, absolute victory. And that's what she was. Betty White. I hope that was a good video for you. It was a lot of fun for me to make. And um, what an icon. Betty White. I'm Mark. My journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now.